All right, guys, in this video, we're going to be 100%ing Final Fantasy 13. And the reason I wanted to do this is because it is one of my favorite games and I finished it three times, but I never actually attempted the 100%. And the reason for that is that it is super tedious to do because you have to be grinding a lot of the same fights to ultimately get a RNG drop, which is not fun to do. And it will take around 70 to 100 hours, so it will take a while to get it 100%. So if you are interested in knowing how to get it 100% and why it is very grindy, let's get right into it. So the main achievements and trophies, depending on which platform you play on, is the Treasure Hunter and the Mastery Seal. The Mastery Seal is just getting all the characters up to max level for all six rolls, which is a lot of XP, so we need to be grinding for this. And the second one is the uh, Treasure Hunter. What you need to do for this one is to held every weapon and accessory in the game, which means you needed to have them at least once in your inventory throughout the game. This is where it gets tricky though, and kind of stupid. There are in total 221 weapons and accessories in the game, and you will need to upgrade each unique accessory type to the maximum tier version to get all the accessories, and as well that you need to upgrade every weapon at least once in the game, and one ultima weapon for each character. To do this, you will need a lot of gil, which is the money in this game. But there is a problem with the gill, it's not like dropped from winning fights, no, it is gained by selling a component item, which can be sold as a premium at the shop, but these are dropped by enemies, which also incurs that you have to get lucky to get them, and not all enemies even drop these items, because they can also just drop regular components which aren't able to be sold as a good premium. The reason why you need a lot of money in this game is just to buy components and there are three types of upgrade components. Your organic materials, this will create a multiplier for when you are upgrading and the inorganic materials, these are actually used to pump in the XP for the weapon to level it up and if it is at a star level, so a max rank, you can use a catalyst component which is used to transform it to the next tier of the accessory or weapon. So the best way to upgrade in the game is to actually grind for components that can be sold for a premium to then buy the components needed for upgrading because then you can get a lot of the same components to pump in the exact XP needed for the item to be at the max level with the three times multiplier all in one go so you don't waste any more components to save money this also means less grinding if you upgrade an active multiplier with inorganic components it will decrease and if you do it all in one you get the most benefit of it this means using multiple other components is shit because you can only put more of the same components in all in one go so it is better to buy just one type more times so you don't have to put the multiplier back up all the time which means that costs more components to use which costs more gil. This will cost so much money around 7 mil is needed to get all the items and weapons upgraded and we have a plan for this so we can make things easier and complete everything at the same time while we are grinding. So the first thing we will be doing is complete the story up to Orphan's Cradle, which is the last area of the game, up to the point where you can travel back to Pulse. While we are doing the story, we will get the story achievements automatically, and during a playthrough we want to pick up every item capsule available so we can get every possible item drop in the game without having to buy them, so it means less grinding for money. We want to use the ability Libra on each new monster during the fights in the story to get all the attributes knowledge from monsters because we will be needing it to get the lore master achievement which should pop up after you've done that 100 times. I won't really talk about the story because the game actually plays itself if you want to. But after chapter 11 I did something I don't recommend you do but it does make the game more interesting so upon entering chapter 11 you are at Pulse, and the game kind of wants you to do the Sieve missions there from 1 to 14 and unlock the Chocobo, because in these areas enemies are somewhat on your current level, 
to be able to beat them normally but you can also just go straight for the ending path which means the enemies are way harder for the level you're on right now so this means you need to be more tactical and also use the game combat roles much better to win the fights and they will also take longer but i do recommend you do mission 1 to 14 first because we got to do that actually anyway before starting the money and the xp grind Brutalis took really long to do because I had to put Fang stuck on Sentinel because if you are like at the last stage of his HP he will keep on spamming the lasers and I cannot tank them or heal them up quick enough. So Fang needed to be on Sentinel and this means that the damage output will be lacking because she is not attacking which let the fight took really long. The other real struggle was the fight with Raj in his super airplane, which he doesn't attack, that he goes in overdrive and keeps spamming the lasers on you, which is impossible to block normally. But you can block it, because when you summon, you can use the summon to transform itself, and then you can actually take no damage, which will bypass this overdrive wave. And then afterwards, we do have to kill him quick enough so he doesn't do the overdrive attack again which we did and we got him so he will come back in a other form where he will just switch stances from ground to air which if you stagger him quick enough he will not do like the strongest attacks to one shot you so if you keep it up and stagger him and he will keep switching the fight will be won with ease and after that we will enter the cradle so in this area, we are uh, going to be farming the sacrifices here. This is going to be our early money and XP grind. And these guys will drop the perfume as a common drop that can be sold for a good chunk of gill. They will also drop the catalyst Scarlet Tight. And this is used for upgrading, but also we can sell it if we have already enough of these. And we only need 11 of these, so we can actually just sell these catalysts if we have too much of them. But first, we do have to get some items, and for that we will be needing to complete mission 1 to 14, and then complete mission 55 to get the growing egg. So we got to go back to Pulse and we do need two other items. These are going to be the Collector's Catalog, which makes the common drop rate higher. And if we upgrade it to the next tier, we have the Connoisseur's Catalog, which makes the rare drop rate higher. To get the Connoisseur's Catalog, we need to upgrade the Collector's Catalog to the next tier. But a second one will be in an item capsule in a higher level area on Pulse. And we are too weak to get there. So we cannot get that one yet. So we gotta upgrade a lesser tier catalog to get the two collector's catalogs. And then we need to upgrade one to the connoisseur's catalog. There's one collector's catalog in the tower ascended from the top elevator by the statue. Once we get that, we can upgrade it to its next tier. But now we need a second version of the collector's catalog. There are two ways to get one at this moment. And that is by upgrading the champion's badge we found in Eden by the siren park to the survival catalog and then upgrade that one again but we can also do the mission 15 to get the survival catalog as a reward which costs no money so it's better and then upgrade that one to the next tier to get a collector's catalog because we need to complete the missions 1 to 14 anyway for the chocobo we can also just do mission 15 as well the reason you want to not do any more missions is that if we xp farm we do get a lot stronger, so getting a 5-star rating for the missions first try is much easier, so we don't have to redo them, which saves a lot of time. So when you do the missions 1-14, to 14, try to get a 5-star rating. A preemptive strike mostly will do the trick. You can even buff yourself up with Aegis Soul and Forge Soul at the start of the fight to get buffs to take them down even faster. The real reason we need the chocobo is that we can access mission 55. This is crucial because the reward from this is going to be a growing egg, which doubles the XP we get after battles. But there is one problem though, this enemy does a lot of damage at this point. So we aren't able to defeat it normally on the current level, but there is a cheese we can do. 
Vanille has a saboteur ability called Death. This will have a chance to one-shot an enemy and you have to rely on RNG for this one, but it will work. To increase the chances though to one-shot the enemies, we need to upgrade Vanille's weapon called the Balladonna Wand, which has the ability to improve the debuffs and it will work with the Death. You will need to upgrade it to the star level then and then upgrade it to the Malboro wand with a Uranidite. Then we need to upgrade this one to the star level to get the maximum amount of chance increase up to this point. I don't know if this will surely get you more RNG but let's just do it anyway because Vanille's weapon is stronger that way. This will cost a lot of upgrade material for upgrading the wands, but we should have enough from the random drops throughout the whole game to have enough money and material so we don't need to grind for this one yet. To get to mission 55, we need to go to Urba and go into the house, which is in the water, and go to the rooftop here to fight the Sieve mission. Then we need to go back to the Steppen and go to the top by riding the Chocobo because only then are you able to reach a high platform leading to the target. Once we reach it, the game will crash. It will crash and it will crash again. And at that point, I took a break. Eventually, I waited half a year to continue this. I got back to it. And it seems that when I did hug the wall, it didn't crash. I can't 100% confirm this because I did reinstall the game and I did have an HD mod installed so I had that one removed as well. And then it ended up working. But once we are here, we're going to make the party with Vanille as the leader so we can cast Dab as a saboteur. One Sentinel, preferably Fang, and one Buffer or Healer. And then we are just going to spam Dab on it and we will kill it that way. So I didn't really know how this strategy worked because I never actually used death and just one-shotting a huge ass boss was really surprising to me that it was possible. But when I first did it, my first encounter I cast it once and it didn't do anything and then I cast it the second time and it was already dead. So I was like, bro, what the hell? I almost even died by the smaller guys at this point because I was just surprised and I wasn't expecting that I already killed it. But I quickly summoned to heal myself back up because I almost died and killed two of the little guys and then afterwards I just took the other ones down. And then we completed the fight with five stars and we got the growing egg. Super nice. After this, we uh, got all the items we need to start the farming grind. So let's head back to the orphan's cradle. So when we are here, we're going to be farming the sacrifices on the mid platform. The reason you want to do this before you beat the game is because of the side platforms. They will be gone if you beat the game. If you walk up these platforms, you can quickly let these sacrifices respawn, making it so you can keep killing them for XP and perfume. So the team I got was Lightning, Fang and Sass. I put the increased drop rate items and the growing egg on Sass because he just serves as a support to give us haste and damage buffs. Fang will be active as a saboteur because she can daze them, making them unable to attack and also reduce their defenses so they will die quicker. She could also be used for commando after the debuffing to kill them alongside with lightning. And for lightning, she will be our main party leader. This will be mainly on commando and using rune god to instantly hit all of them and stagger them right at the start of the battle. You can also use the quake ability to quickly stagger them at the start. You probably get one TP point every time you win a fight so you can keep doing it at the start of a fight so it's easier to stagger there are two groups of sacrifices walking around to the mid platform a group of four and a group of three i focus on the group of three because it's a lot faster to clear them because they always stayed relatively together in the fight to keep hitting them with the runga and for every fight, you want to start off with a preemptive strike. If you miss the timing, just reset and try again because clearing the fights that way is much faster because you can instantly stagger them. For some damage bonuses to Lightning, you can give her more magic. So she will deal overall more damage with her rune guy. And you probably will get the achievement for hitting an enemy with the 99,999 threshold. So you will get the trophy for this one. 
So the question is, how long do you want to do this? Well, I recommend you farm XP up to the point that you have at least maxed out all the main roles of the Kisterium for each character, because those stats bonuses add the most value. If you beat the game, the Kisterium will upgrade one more stage for the main roles, and that will be the last. So you may want to put some points in the other roles. Now, especially Synergist for Fang and Vanille, and also Saboteur for Lightning, because we will be needing those later in the game. For the amount of gil, I would say at this point 5 mil should be enough to upgrade and buy all the needed items. The farming then goes as followed. Go to the sacrifices and start the battle with a preemptive strike. We cast Runga straight away on them to instantly stagger them. I did use the Lionheart for Lining, so it had a ability Quick Stagger, which instantly staggered them right away. Then you can just keep spamming it until they die. At the start, your party may be weak, so you can switch Fang to Commando to help you out clear them up when the stagger meter is almost down. Then after, you can jump on the side platform, go a little bit down until the sacrifices respawn on the platform, and you can repeat this progress. So after you've done this for around 10 hours, maybe I did it more, I don't really remember. And also you gotta be a little bit lucky on this because the RNG is still a factor here. Because you will be needing the components to get the money. After uh, we've done this and you got enough gill and XP, we can face the Orphan's Cradle. Which should be a piece of cake because you now are pretty over level for most enemies which you fight here. You also can level up uh, the weapons for the characters you will be using to gain even more damage bonuses to make it even easier to deal with the rest of the game. Don't forget to pick up the item capsules here as well because I did forgot to get the second last tier of the HP bonus so I had to upgrade it from a lower tier which will waste more money. So get that one. So we have to do the final fight 5 star and meaning we have to get orphan 5 star and this is going to be the second phase where you only see orphan so it's not the first phase where the uh, sort of mommy and daddy are around him with the huge ass blade. So the second phase is pretty easy actually you do get the doom so you have to be quick on this one but... It's just debuff him with Fang and buff yourself up with either Sass or Hope or even other characters. And then just put up the stagger meter with triple Ravager if you can. And if it's staggered, just wail on it with triple commando and it's dead. So you get the five star for free. And you can redo this fight after you defeated it. So if you didn't got it, you can try again later when you are stronger, higher level and even if you have problems then you can use the gold watch from the final mission in Pulse. So at this point we are pretty strong in the game and we have no issue getting the lower tier missions completed with a 5 star rating. Those are the lower than the class A tier missions but to get an easy 5 star in missions Always go for a preemptive strike when possible because then you can instantly stagger the enemies making it so that you can probably kill them straight away. And if you have trouble getting the preemptive strike you can use a Deceptazole to get a guaranteed one. You can buy these now from the shop because you have completed the game. As well as the uh, Fortizole and the Aegisole to uh, buff yourself up in fights to get even a more head start so you can easily get a 5 star. What we did is just take the path from the main story and completed all the missions along the way and also do the missions on the left path by the fallen ship where you started chapter 11. Also do not forget to pick up every item capsule alongside the areas which can be guarded by high tier monsters but we can take them on now with ease because we are pretty over leveled. While we do this we are still holding the growing egg on at all times because then we will be leveling much faster. Once we are in the cave, there is a section that you have to go between a broken bridge and you actually need to go to the other end of the cave to the Sulia Springs and take the ride on the Pulse Falsy backwards to the cave and it will take you to the other side of the broken bridge. So we will be able to do the missions there. There is a mission in the Solia Springs which wants you to beat a giant turtle but we're going to leave that one later for now. 
After we have done all the possible missions before the barrier where we got the growing egg from the target, we can go on and do the Titan Trials. The Titan Trials missions are kind of annoying because you have to complete the same missions repeatedly to eventually get all the missions within the trial. How it works is that if you interact with the Sieve missions here, you will get teleported to an area where the target is presented. And if you beat it, then you can move on to the next mission area, which is connected by the path you took previously. And for each area, you can go top or down to move through the trials. If you complete all of them, you can do the ultimate final trial, which gives you the Ganji Glove, which is essential for farming the giant turtles later on, but... This mission is located on the D stage of the trial, so you gotta redo the missions to get there again. So all the missions from stages A to D are very simple, and we take them down with ease. This is because you can free room in these areas, so you can make use of the preemptive strike and stagger them instantly at the start. But there are some enemies you can't do this with, so you have to fight them normally. For the E stages, however, you can't free room, and it will set you straight in the fight when approaching the marker. The stronger fights are going to be the stages from E1 and E2. On E1, we will have our big friends who gave us the growing egg from before, but still hits like a truck and pretty much can one-shot you with his screech attack. The way we could do this is by using the vanille death cheese or straight up fight it, which would be hard because we will be one-shotted with his attacks, so we either level up some more or we have a good strategy. So what we did here was neither of those things and we got really lucky with the random instant chain bonus lightning has on her. She will gain this by combining her sword quick stagger ability with the speed stash accessory to gain the bonus ability random instant chain which has a small chance to fill the stagger gauge up to a maximum to 999 which will take down any enemy very quickly in an instant. What I tried to do first was think of a strat by blocking the screech with a summon and that did work. When the summon was gone I got the instant chain so we could just instantly kill it and we got the scoring to 5 star rank for free. For the uh, E2 stage you will face a Zernitra. This is a flying monster. You're going to be uh, facing these guys in other missions as well. They can be pretty hard because they will be debuffing you with the protect and then we'll do his bite attack which can result in a one shot so for the start i tried to have fang on sentinel to block the bite and i got him to a stagger point which took too long and i got a three star but later the tactics is actually that you want to go for the Zol and Aegis Zol at the start of the fight because you also got Veil which protects you from debuffing from him for a couple of times. So you can use that time to stagger him at the start while he is debuffing you because he will only do his bite attack on a target which has deep protect on it. So if you are lucky enough that you will not get debuffed you can quickly stagger him and then you can kill him instantly and that will result in a five star you can also use the tactic on uh, the other missions if you have to face this flying monster so now that we have completed all the trials we can do the final try but what we're gonna do first is to explore pulse again and complete every mission available which were blocked before this will make us come across the little cactus, which is scared away by Sass, but will let us do the mission to fight the giant cactus that is far on the edge of the area of the steppe. Also, when you are here and riding the chocobo, we want to let it find the items for us and you want to dig them up. And if you do this 20 times, we eventually will get the ribbon accessory with the achievement for it, but we will get that later on. Now that Sass has found his cactus friend again, he's not so small anymore. He's pretty big. The fight is pretty extreme with the needle attack, which might be easy avoided with a sentinel. But I got really lucky in this fight and I got saved by the random instant chain, which made the fight a free kill. And I also got it five stars. So this fight was pretty easy. After that, we did finish all the possible missions around Pulse with a 5-star rating, except for the missions 64 and 65, and the ones forming the circle within the steppe, because if we beat all of those, the giant turtles will have their ultimate form, which we don't want yet.
Now it is time to upgrade all the accessories up to the final tier. So we have all of them. So I used a list of how much material I needed to buy and also use. So I didn't waste any money and components. The list will be down in the description. So for all the accessories, if you pick up all the items, you are able to just upgrade the last version of it to the maximum tier because we do have to upgrade at least every accessory because the maximum tier has to be upgraded and transformed from a catalyst. So we're going to be doing that right now. So what we're going to do for upgrading is we go to the uh, save points and then go to the shop and we will buy three types of components. The first one is the study bone, which is used to get the multiplier up to three. And then we either buy the superconductor or the ultra compact reactor and pump in the exact amount of XP needed to hit max level all in one go. So you don't have to get the multiplier up again. And then we're just going to use the catalyst needed for transforming it to the next tier. So which is the final tier. So I realized I actually didn't pick up the adamant bangle, which is the uh, second to last tier of the HP item. So I had to use the diamond bangle, the tier before, and upgrade that one to the star level, and then use the catalyst to get it to the adamant bangle, and then level that one up to the star level as well, which costs extra money to do because we need more components. And we do need to upgrade the adamant bangle with a dark matter, but that's going to be a later on. And I actually forgot to do that. The total amount of catalysts we need to upgrade all the weapons at least once with all the Ultima weapons for each character. And also the last tier of all the accessories are presented on the screen. So some of these uh, materials we already got dropped by just playing the rest can be bought from the shop but i recommend to farm the dark matter and the traps because they cost a ton of gill which is not worth buying and we do have a solution if you weren't so lucky to get the six traps needed to get the ultima weapons which are dropped from giant turtles but we're going to be talking about that later when we are actually farming these guys after uh, we have upgraded every available accessory at this point we go to the final mission within the Titan Trials, which is located in the second to last area of the Trials. So it's going to be in the D tier location and the mission will be in any of the D areas. Here you will be fighting a Atakus, which is a buffed version of the Samurai Thief you fight in the Orphan's Cradle. The tactic for this fight is to lock in Snow instead of Sass, because he will be just there as a sentinel role to block all of his attacks. After all, the attacks will be a one-shot when he is getting stronger, the lesser health he has. From this point, Fang is going to be the ultimate leader for the rest of the game, because if you have leveled her Synergist to the point so you can cast Haste, Brave Ra and Faith Ra, we don't really need Sass anymore, because we can just buff ourselves up now. And better with that, she can also debuff enemies and also deal the most damage of all the party members with the commando role. We do also have Lightning still in the party because she still does a lot of damage with Commando and we need that to take this guy down. So the fight will go as followed. When you start, you debuff him with Fang and also with Lightning if she has the Saboteur abilities already unlocked. And then you're going to be buffing yourself up and Lightning with Brave Ra and Faith Ra. Also, don't forget to use Fortisol and Aegisol at the start of the fight. After that, we are going to be attacking it with the Ravager roll to increase the stagger percentage a bit. You probably won't get it to its max stagger point, but we need it up a little bit so the commando attacks will do at least more damage to beat it down. So I would say getting it up to 300 in the stagger percentage should be enough and then start attacking with commando. If the debuffs wear off, you reapply them as well for your damage buffs and let lightning attack it nonstop and let snow just on sentinel and you will beat it with a five star rating. And then you will get one of the most important accessories in the game, which is the Genji glove. The Genji Glove will let you succeed the damage limit of 99,999 damage. What is needed to beat down the larger turtles rooming the steppe that we will need to farm to get max level and also for some more gill and the catalyst for the ultimate weapons. So this means we need more Genji Gloves for all the active party members to make things easier. You can just use one, but it is better if everyone has one because it makes things easier. But to get another one, you do need to beat a large turtle. So if we go to the Solia Springs, we can interact with Mission 63 and go to the Steppe with the Marker, 
where we will need to fight a huge turtle. There are two versions of these huge turtles, the walking ones, they are much stronger. And then we have the second version, which is the stationary ones. These are much less stronger than the walking ones. And for this mission, it's going to be a stationary one. To start a fight, we add Vanille to our party, which will be serving as our third ultimate member. So we have Fang, Lightning and Vanille throughout the rest of the game. So we start with Fang and Vanille buffing ourselves up. You could use Fortisol and Aegisol for this fight, but you will be need to fighting these guys a lot more, so this will actually explain the main tactic of beating them down. For Fang, I do have an accessory on her, so she has auto haste, so she can quickly apply the haste and the damage buffs to all the members, while Vanille does the defense buff because she does it automatically, so we do the damage buffs. And Lightning may be on Medic, so she can heal us up. For the Fang buffs though, only apply the Magic and the Haste buff to other members at the start. Because they only will be serving as Ravagers to take out the Lags. While Fang does the special Commando ability High Wind to one-shot the Lags after it is staggered. So for Fang, you add both damage bonuses with that you reapply the haste because the auto haste will run out much faster than if you apply it regularly with a buff before you switch out to the ravager roll for staggering the legs. For this fight it might be better to let one member to be a medic while staggering the legs if you are not able to tank the damage yet. If the lag is staggered you want to be switching to fang as a commando to do the high wind attack and take out the lag and the other members will be on medic to heal up the damage done for the next lag cycle if you can't take the lag down with one high wind yet you can stack up the stagger meter a little bit more with the uh, ravager roll before you switch out to commando to take it down so i had a little frustration when you are switching to the other lag members ended up attacking the main body instead which make you lose some time so the trick was before you switch out you actually want to select the lag and then switch back to ravager after you took down one lag the eye will actually attack the lag now instead of the main body because you have targeted before you switch it out so you don't lose any time so now you have to stagger the lag again with the ravager rolls and if it is staggered you can switch to uh, commando and take it down with high wind so if you took down both legs, he will fall on the ground, making it so you can deal free damage to the turtle without being attacked. When he falls, you quickly want to set Fang to Synergist and give everyone Fafra and Bravera, while the others are on Samatur, debuffing it until it got Deprotect, Defaith and Imperial on it. This will maximize the amount of damage you can do with the highest stagger rate and then wail on it with Triple Ravager, to get it up to the max stagger and then you want to go triple commando this would be enough to one cycle it before it stands up and you can bring down the lags again if it does stand up once we have done this we will get the second genji glove making it a lot easier to beat these guys there's only one genji glove left to get and here you want to go to the missions forming the circle within the steppen and activate mission 62. Do note that we don't want to complete every mission in the circle yet. Because then the giant turtles and the smaller turtles will transform into their ultimate form. Making it so farming them will be impossible at this stage. The target of the mission is going to be in the same area where you will need to fight two shield sieves. The fight can be a little bit tricky but here is how it will go. You both want to slow them down because they will spam magic spells at you with Fang. And also let Vanille cast Imperial on them so it is quicker to stagger them while Lightning is healing us. After you have slowed them both down, you want to focus at least one that has the Imperial debuff on it. And stagger it with three Ravagers or with one Medic if you are getting low health. Because they will keep on spamming magic at you. Once it is staggered, switch to Saboteur and quickly debuff it with the Protect. And if you got it on it, switch to Commando and to Ravagers because it might be the case if a member in your party will attack the wrong enemy if you go triple Commando here because there are two targets. So when you took the first one down, you gotta repeat this progress. Slow it, stagger, deprotect and take it down. This will let us grant the final Genji Glove in the game so all your active party members can now use it. Which means we are going to be farming the Giant Turtles next.
so there are four giant turtles and the steppe two of them are walking these are way stronger than the other two which are stationary the reason why we want to farm them now is because it is the fastest way to get up to max level at this point with that the giant turtles may drop a platinum ingot which sells for 150,000 gil this is needed to upgrade all the unique weapons for each character at least once with the one ultima weapon and also we need to buy at least one weapon from the shop for each character which will cost a lot of gil because they aren't dropped in the game further if you are lucky they may drop the catalyst for transforming a weapon second steer to the ultimate form the traps and you will be needing six of these and i ended up getting seven of them but there is a free way to get them only you want to do this at the very end because you can dismantle the Genji gloves with a star level, I believe, to get traps out of them. So you can get up to three catalysts and then you can use one to upgrade the wand from Vanille, which we were using to its ultimate form. And if you dismantle that one with a star level, you will be granted another three catalyst traps. So now you got five in total needed for the other ultimate weapons from the other characters. Because we already held Vanille's Ultima weapon then to get them. But do this last because you will be needing those Genji gloves. So we want to keep on the catalogs to increase the common and rare drop rate. With the growing egg. For the other accessories you can equip. You can go with more damage bonuses. Also you can upgrade the weapons from the main party. So they will do overall more damage. The route we will be taking is that you start on this safe point by the water and challenge the walking giant turtle nearby. I already talked about how to take them down but I will give a quick refresh so when the fight starts you want to buff yourself up with the damage buffs and also give the other members haste and Fafra. then switch to triple ravager to take down one leg. If it is staggered switch to commando with medics to one shot the leg with high wind and heal up the damage you took. Then lock on to the other leg before switching to Triple Ravager to stagger it and take it down with High Wind if it is staggered. Then he will fall on the ground, buff everyone up with the damage buffs and let other members apply the Protect, the Faith and Imperial on it. And then stagger it to max percentage with Triple Ravager and then take it down with Triple Commando. After the first one is down, you want to go to the side where the two stationaries are. The first one does have some lesser mobs in the fight, but you can quickly take them down with Fang as commando with a double medic at the start and continue the fight normally. If it is down, we can go to the third one nearby, past the smaller turtles. After that one is gone, we can go to the last one, which is walking around in the area in front of us. After this one is down, head to the save point near some small ledge you can just jump on, save the game and quit out. Now you want to reload the save file and the giant turtles are respawned, so now you can take the route backward and repeat the cycle until you are max level. After completing 3 cycles, so beating around 12 giant turtles, you want to level up the Crystarium because you are almost at the max xp cap you can hold at a time so you can get more xp again after doing this for 10 hours we are at max level and we got a ton of money from the platinum ingots around 2.6 mil i was be granted we will need this to buy one weapon for each of the characters and then we need to buy components to upgrade all the weapons in the game and transform them to the second tier we already got the catalyst for the ultima weapons because we were really lucky so we only need to upgrade one weapon second tier of each character to the star level this is because the ultima weapon is just one unique item only the stats and abilities depend on the weapon it got transformed from because we already upgraded the weapon second tier from lightning fang and vanille to the star level because it did help us make the farming easier because we did more damage so we can just transform them straight away. This can also be done during farming if you already got the catalyst drop. Because it does give you one more ATB bar which is like the best thing ever in the game. For Snow, Hope and Sass we use the weapons that need the least amount of XP for getting it to the star level. So we can upgrade that one to the ultima weapon. So it saves a little bit of money. The weapons are the Warrior's Emblem for Snow. The Smoking Mirror for Hope, I know it doesn't say that, but it translated to smoke and mirror, and I have no idea how to pronounce this. And the serious sidearms for Sass. 
We also found the ribbon thanks to the chocobo, which is gained when he digs up the items 20 times. And we can transform this to the super ribbon, but not yet because we have to farm dark matter. And dark matter can only be gained from farming the ultimate small turtles. Or you stay there or buy it, but we're not going to buy it. We're going to farm it because we don't have that kind of money. After this, we will complete all the remaining missions and beat the ultimate giant turtle because we do need to beat it at least once for the achievements. So we complete the other missions from the circle, which are pretty easy now because we are max level and face the ultimate giant turtle. The ultimate giant turtle have significantly more health and damage than the lesser versions and have two new attacks which are ultima that hits the whole party with a lot of damage and roar which also does a lot of damage to the whole party but also has a chance to remove the buffs you have on with that it can daze you which will render you unable to attack and you will take double damage from the next attack taken which is super annoying in this fight because he already does a lot of damage the daze effect will then be cleansed if you take the damage or you can try removing it by a medic. So if you got it, you can quickly switch to a deck that has medics on it. But if you all are dazed, you have to take damage. For the deck you can use for this fight, it is actually the same as the lesser version. Only now you need triple sentinel to block the incoming damage from Ultima and the roar attack so you got to be quick in switching when you see this move indicator because if you miss the timing you probably will die you can make yourself stronger in this fight though beforehand by using the ultimate versions of the weapons of your active party and also upgrade them as much as you can to increase the overall damage output with that you can also use the strength and magic boost accessories to deal more damage that's what i did but one accessory is a must and that is the Genji Glove, otherwise you will not be able to do enough damage to kill it fast enough. So it did take me a couple of attempts because I didn't fight this guy before and it pretty much goes the same as a lesser version. Only when he does the Ultima and Roar, you need to switch to Sentinel, otherwise you will die. And it's pretty quick reaction speed if he does the attacks. I didn't upgrade my Ultima weapon much higher and also had no high HP accessories because I didn't have really any money left. That's because I did upgrade the strength and a magic accessory and you needed dark matter for this. So I bought dark matter from the shop which you can actually now farm from the smaller turtles. And you could farm the smaller turtles first for the dark matter and then upgrade the accessories if this fight is not doable. But we got him anyway and that is mainly because of the poison debuff which does percentage damage in this game which will deal a ton of damage because he has a lot of HP. So as long as you have the poison on him and do the main tactic of the lesser turtle for dealing damage we got him on the second cycle. After this, we are going to be doing the final Sief mission of the game, which is located where you fought Pretendalus and Urba at the end of the highway. This mission is going to be easy because uh, we're going to be chasing it with poison. So once you have activated the mission, the marker will be way back at the side area where you started off on Pulse. So when you started chapter 11, we're going to be finding a high level flying Sief, which will have a very annoying ability where he will be untargetable and heals itself up. This will make the fight super long and it will deal more damage the lower health it gets. The tactic is going to be a triple saboteur for debuffing it at the start. Also, you can start the fight with Fortisol and Aegisol, so you're buffed up already at the start. Also use Libra so you and the AI party members know which debuffs you can put on it. And that's mainly the poison one which is super important after you get all the possible debuffs on it, switch to Triple Ravager and stagger it. Once it is staggered, switch to Ravager Commando. Ravager where Fang is going to be the commando because she will do the most damage because she has the most strength in the game. You can also use Triple Commando here because that's what I used. Now he will probably do his impenetrable aura which makes him invulnerable and heal himself up during this fighting cycle. He will also remove any debuffs and will buff itself up. And these buffs will depend on how low his health is. 
And this is where you can use triple synergist to buff yourself up and also use triple medic to heal yourself up and repeat the cycle until he is sort of half health. Also, one more thing. Eventually, he will do the wicked whirl. This is a very strong attack. And for this, you want to switch to a triple sentinel to block the incoming damage. And you probably need to heal yourself up with triple medic after this. Now that he is almost half health, you want to stick poison on him and summon with Vanille. So Vanille is going to be the leader for this fight. So once you have summons, we want to build up the Gestalt bar to max if you can before transforming. When you have transformed, you can stall the fight and he won't do his impenetrable aura. This is where you can use the chain cannons at the last second each time to let the poison do its damage to take it down. The more you fill the Gestalt bar, the longer you can stall to let the poison do its work. After the summon is done, we want to use an elixir so we can summon again. But before summoning, we want to buff our defenses up and put poison on him. After that, we can summon and repeat the cycle until he dies. This will also grant us the final dropped item in the game, which is the gold watch. That does make it easier to get a mission 5 star. But after this mission, we already completed all the missions with 5 star. So the item is useless for us. If you didn't got to fight 5 star, I recommend just reload the save at the save point nearby. So you at least didn't misuse the elixir, fortisol and aegisol. After this, we only need to upgrade a couple of items, which need a black matter catalyst, which is dropped by the ultimate smaller turtles now. These guys are pretty annoying because you can't make them fall on the ground, rendering them unable to attack you. The fight goes sort of similar to the giant turtles, but you don't have to take out its legs. So you can't put triple medic on because you don't have to stagger the legs anymore. This is also needed if you get hit by the Ultima, Bay and Quake attacks, which will need to be blocked by switching to the triple sentinel and then heal yourself back up. Although you can't poison them, putting slow in them is very important so they don't spam the attacks. And this is best done at the start of the fight. So you can buff yourself up and focus on dealing damage after you have slowed it. His bay attack is similar to the roar attack from the giant turtles, which will remove the buffs and will dace you so you can't attack. Also a reason to have triple medic so all members can cleanse it if not everyone got dazed. He also might do a quake right after the bay attack, so it's better to stick on sentinel before switching to medic, so you can still tank the quake attack. You also want to have the increased rare drop rate catalog on, because that makes the dark matter drop much faster. After we got enough dark matter, we will be able to transform the ribbon to the super ribbon, and also the Prison's weapons from Sass to the second tier, which will now mark the point that we have held all the weapons and accessory in the entire game. So once we have this, we need to go to Urba and interact with the little robot who will acknowledge us as the treasure hunter. Yet he didn't do that. Because we forgot a few items to upgrade, which were the giant gloves, the Antares Deluxes for Sass and it took me a while to remember I still needed to transform the animate bangle because I thought that was the final version of the HP accessory because I forgot the original animate bangle and the orphan's cradle so my brain thought it was already the final one because I upgraded it but that wasn't the case and to get it to the final form we needed another black matter so yeah we have to beat some more small turtles again and they were kind enough to drop it for us. So we could upgrade the bangle to the final form. So this means we finally have all the weapons and accessories in the game held. So we're going to talk to the little robot again. And it seems we are the treasure hunter. And that, guys, is how you get Final Fantasy 13 100%. So these are going to be my uh, final thoughts about 100% the game. I really enjoyed doing this, only the farming was super tedious to do, but I guess it, it can't be blamed because the game kind of forces you to farm for uh, components this way to get gil, because you need gil to upgrade your uh, weapons and you need weapons to be stronger because 
uh, then you are able to beat the stronger enemies in the game. So the late game enemies like the ultimate giant turtles and the final uh, mission. Like you have to do this regardless because the game just doesn't give you enough gill to be able to upgrade all the items. So they kind of fixed this in the second game where you get gill from uh, every fight just dropped and not be farmed from components. Also, you need a lot of XP to get max level as well. So if you are not like using the growing egg, like everything I did, you have to do it twice. So it takes so much longer. And I did cheese the guy who gives you the growing egg. So thank God, otherwise it would take much longer. I did clock it in like 66 hours, I believe. And I was sort of on active for a lot of hours. So I would say around 60 hours, maybe it took a long time and 30 hours of that was, I think, just farming and doing useless fights for just getting five stars and missions. Uh, this is one of my favorite games, and uh, this is technically uh, the end game of this game, which I never did, actually. And to be honest, it was kind of down because uh, I did... Uh, cheese a lot of enemies to make it a lot easier so i couldn't get the full experience but to get the full experience i was just getting one shot at all the time because i was too weak and under leveled so i had to farm and then if you farm you will eventually be even more over leveled than you were under leveled so it kind of sucks that but anyway i enjoyed doing this but guys, that wrapped up the video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And if it did, uh, don't forget to hit the like button to support the video. And also, if you want more content like this one, then you can subscribe to the channel. And uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.